Right, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming. Well, you can come back in now, Maurice. Look at this. Height of organisation. Maurice has preempted me uh, putting him on the spot. So, forthcoming meetings. Next. There's nothing on it. Yeah. Next week. Right. I, knew what, okay. I knew what was on next week. Right. Thank you. Yeah, walking treasure hunt next week. Oh, we managed. Oh, we've got it. It's done. <laughs> so, as you can see, Heidi's got the clues. If you want to get to uh, use Terry's book of uh, cheats, you can uh, speak to Heidi. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, first, first of August. Um, somebody we haven't seen for a long while. Uh, John Cope and Clive Molyneux should be an interesting night. Uh, 8th of August is committee and 15th of August a navigational exercise uh, map 103 starting from here. And 22nd, 22nd of August uh, car trial at Bankhouse Farm which is Ingleton. So and then 29th of August, the real one not to miss. And Jim's organised this and he doesn't even know about it. What? <laughs> HRCR Minis. You didn't say no last week. A little bit of a quick roundup. Dave, I know you and Terry were down in uh, in Wales at the uh, Wish With. How did you go on? That good, eh? So good fun event. Quite a few, quite a few uh, knackered injury incidents and gearboxes at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, absolutely, you just can't, you just can't, just can't fight it really. Just, uh, Brilliant. It's a super, absolutely superb event under the target now. I advise anybody to uh, go down, have a look, or go down and have a go. 
him and Dave Pedley turned up with an MX-5 and I thought, you're having a laugh. But uh, no, we drove it down, had a good event and drove it home. Brilliant. So I said, how much you, when, when do you get your sun down and your, your tank down for this? I said, no. <coughs> having a joke, are you? I said, no. I said, the plastic under the train, I thought. <laughs> 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 you're going home on a trailer. You didn't. You didn't very well. Really? Simon and Matt, you, you've been Lake District Classic, was it? Yeah. <laughs> Two trophies and, and a bag of spanners. <laughs> yeah, very compact event, it's very well organised. Didn't have to get up too early, we're off the tip. Good enough. Brilliant. I brought the car. That's it. Only a bit. <laughs> Anybody else done anything? You, how did you go? Good enough. Well, makes a change for me to be able to say we've got a guest tonight who He's probably more outspoken and more controversial than I am. <laughs> Neil, would you like to join us? So, as I usually like to do, let's go back to the beginning. Where did you start in rally? Well, I'd always, I'd always been obviously a motorsport fan. I mean, with my, with my father's involvement, um, we always used to go and watch the British Grand Prix. I remember from 1978 going and watching Silverstone and Brands Hatch because it used to alternate back then. And that was it. I was going to be a Formula One driver. You know, I wasn't going to bother with this bloody optician lark or anything like that or an accountant or anything. No, I was going to be a Formula One racing driver. James Hunt. I don't, I'd got it all planned out. I was going to have a little Formula Ford car and a converted coach driving around Europe, winning races, surviving off my prize money. That's what I was going to do. But of course, um, then I discovered sort of booze and women <laughs> <laughs> and being a bloody hooligan. So that were it. I, 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 didn't, I didn't get involved in any kind of act, you know, organised motorsport. Yeah, I wrapped a few cars around some trees and motorbikes and stuff and always thought I was the quickest guy down bloody lanes of Garstang and stuff. But... Um, I sort of fell into it really by accident. I don't. It wasn't wasn't really my dad. Most people assume your dad's a rally car driver. That's why you got involved in rallying. And it wasn't. It was just. I, I, I don't really know. I think I just decided. Oh, I'll go along to Pendle and see what this this rallying lark and stuff. Um, went along and decided I did some auto testing, did a PCTs and stuff. And yeah, it, it just sort of all just snowballed from there. Then we went and did, I was going to do some road rallying. But again, I was still spending loads of money on booze and bloody women and dicking about driving road cars that I couldn't really afford to. And because I couldn't afford them, because they were on HP, so I couldn't use them because I knew damn well I'd bloody wrap it sooner or later. I always did. So I used to hire them. I used to go to like Avis and Hertz and go and get these, these, uh, these, 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 rally, these, these, these cars to borrow for the, for the weekend. 60 quid it used to cost me for a weekend with a 50 pound damage deposit. So I thought, yeah, if I, if I completely snot it, so what, it's only cost me 50 quid. That's, that's, like, that's, one that's less than one tire now, sort of thing. So, and um, first few events, again, my dad didn't really encouraged me I think he didn't discourage me but he didn't encourage me either he didn't tell me anything so we set off I think the first event we did was um, 1994 Pendle Summer Rally and um, we set off and of course I've still got this thing in the back of my head I'm James Hunt I'm, I'm bloody I'm awesome I am I'm the fastest guy on two you know on two and four wheels no one can keep up with me and we set off like a bloody maniac we you that uh, Abigail, my now wife, <laughs> then girlfriend, because no bugger would sit with me. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but I didn't have a clue. Didn't have a bloody clue what I were doing. 
And I just thought, basically, it's 150 mile of sort of more, you know, like North Yorkshire, Moreland Roads, Lancashire Moreland Roads, and the idea is it's a rally. Because I remember marshalling way back when on the old devils and illuminations and stuff, when it were like a big bloody flat out thing. So that's what this was. So I went for it, drove like an absolute nutter. And I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting all this sort of James Hunt stuff coming back because I started at like car 44 or something. I'm knocking on the doors of the top 10. I'm a bloody hero. You know, I'm, I'm catching them. Well, these, these guys are shit. They don't know what they're doing. Um, yeah, of course, we got like about two hours worth of bloody early penalties, didn't we? Because <laughs> I just went flat knacker, the full bloody thing, driving through towns, thinking, yeah, this, this is competitive. I'll go through here at 60, I don't care. You know, sort of thing. Um, and, uh, yeah, my dad, again, my dad didn't really... I don't know, he, he didn't sort of say, well, no, you stupid son, you shouldn't be doing this. this is, there's times to go quick and times to go slow. And I mean, on that event, we got hopelessly lost, completely and utterly lost. And, uh, but then miraculously reappeared. It just so happened, we miraculously reappeared on the, the section that me and Ian Wynne Stanley had PR. <laughs> so, but yeah, we came last, I think, or next to last. Uh, but not great fun, great fun. I wasn't bothered. I was there. I was doing. So you done one rally. You got a rake of early penalties. And got hopelessly lost. What went wrong? We didn't have a clue. Yeah, but <laughs> we, we carried know. on doing it for a long while. <laughs> well, we got better. You know, yeah. We, we spoke to other crew members, talking to people. There was a lot of, you know, a lot of helpful advice because. I know there's a lot of backbiting and bitchiness in rallying, but I think on the whole, most people are pretty decent. And if you go to them, I mean, when I was doing the 205 challenge, I was yeah. no expert, far you, from it. You're jumping ahead down now. You're but, jumping way, way ahead. But, but like, <laughs> novices, novices would come and talk to me, purely because I was up near the front because Ian was such a good driver. They thought I knew what I was doing. But I would sort of try and help. And I think most people, genuinely do if you're at never if you're at an event and you're not so sure ask them ask someone because they will they're not going to give you a bum steer um because i think yeah it's a good sport we're full of basically nice people um which is something we should be all proud of <laughs> <laughs> so going back to your early days because would it have been would have been in, into the would it have been into the two thousands before you started navigating? Yeah, um, stage rallying just wasn't for me at all. I mean, why the hell would anybody want to go and do forty mile round bloody wheat for several hundred quid? Have to have a helmet, overalls, bloody slick tyres. It was just madness to me. Was that because? Virtually every other Saturday, I was going out and doing 150 miles of competitive motorsport, 50 quid entry fee, as I say, 50 quid to Hertz or Avis or whoever I could actually visit because I ran out of them. <laughs> they all knew you. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, couldn't, I couldn't go back to the same place twice because the cars, when I returned them, were knackered. Um, so it were like, say, 100 quid plus, plus fuel and because these higher cars weren't particularly thirsty, you know, like you, you get a nice sort of, I, I did, I remember doing the Westmoreland in a, a 1.8 Renault Laguna. Uh, it had 50 miles on the clock when I picked it up. And if you remember the Westmoreland, we used to use that quarry. Um, oh, it, it was knackered. Absolutely looked like sort of Frank Bruno had to do at the underside of it. Big dents and gouges taken out of it all over. All the tyres were virtually down to the bloody wire. Um, so used to do, I used to dump them, cover of darkness, six o'clock in the morning, shove the keys for it like a box and leg it. Then you get these calls like on Monday morning, Mr. Dubai, this, this, this car. No, it was fine when I left it. <laughs> you, know, you prove otherwise, mate. Um, and uh, so no, stage rallying absolutely held no interest to me whatsoever. Um, I thought I thought it was just stupid to spend all that money. Bobby, did you pay for your uh, Mark 3S, 
Well, every time, put it this way, every time I emptied the petrol tank, I wrote it off. <laughs> it was about 50. What it was, my stepsister was buying an Astra 1.4. And they said, if you bring a car, we will give you 50 quid cash back. So she was going to take this car, and I'm thinking, no, this is a good car. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. A Y Reg. 1.6 Mark III Escort gear. Still had velour, velour seats and trim, wooden panelling and everything. So I said, well, I'll give you 50 quid for it. And then you don't need to trade it in, and I'll have it, and I'll, I'll rally it. I'm going up in the world. I'm going to have my own rally car. Yeah, it's, it's a shed, but it's my own rally car. Um, so we did this deal, yeah. So, I, so 50 quid it cost me, did that Escort. And I got a good few years out of it. I think I finally killed it on the, what was it, Sheffield and Hallam, was it? Rally the Dams. Rally the Dams, that's it. Uh, yeah, the Lord of Whites, and I absolutely killed it. And then I actually traded it in, there was a, another, I bought a 306 and they were doing 500 quid if you bring a car. <laughs> <laughs> so I took, I basically, we towed this Escort in, and we had to suddenly like cut, make sure they didn't see it, tore the escort in, park it up, there you go mate, there's my car, that's, that's my part X, um, thinking yeah, yeah, good luck with that mate, it was all blotches of hammerite, it was, it was metallic blue, and the road rally rules, it had to be all the same colour, so it was like, it was metallic blue, proper Ford colour, but I, to, 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 to repair stuff that I'd done to it over the years, the damage, I bought some blue hammerite, and it was like sky blue, blue hammerite, it's just like, that'll do, that's right, it's still, still blue, isn't it? <laughs> um, but yeah, then I moved up, I got a 205, didn't I? Um, but that was, that was bloody crap. I got better results in the Escort, and I had more fun. Um, and then I went, and so like, how did I get to staging? I went to um, Kev Thurber and Pat Flynn were organising this 205 challenge. And, it was, and I had a 205 <coughs> road rally car. And of course, I'm still bloody fastest thing in the world. So I'm going to go and show these people what's what. Single mate, cheap, yeah, I can do this. I went to the room and suddenly realised we went to Derby County Football Club, 2001, I think, or two, I can't remember. And it were packed with people, and I thought, they're going to kick my ass. <laughs> Absolutely. And people like Ian Stanley, I knew. I couldn't hold a torch to Ian. Give him a bloody sit on lawnmower and me in a bloody GTA, he'd still beat me. So I thought, yeah, I'm gonna get my ass kicked and it's gonna cost me a fortune. I know what, Ian, Stanley, I'll co drive for you. How's that then? Yeah, that's it. I thought, I'll win one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's when I got started. I'd actually done years and years ago before that, I did a, an event up at Flukeborough with Bill Chadwick and uh, an Astra. And um, I said another reason why I thought it weren't for me, I mean, I, we'd come up to a split. I didn't miss it, but I was late. I was like, sort of not quite so sure what I was doing. And then we were coming up and I'm, oh, left, 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 left here, left here, left here. And then we got back into service. And I said, really sorry about that, really sorry about that. He said, I don't mind, I weren't listening anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, 2002, I think we started the challenge. So that, that was... We were talking about this last week. It's probably the most successful one mate challenge there's ever been. That there were more 205s competing on any one event. Oh, sometimes we'd take challenge. like 60 cars. It were epic. Unbelievable. Because it was cheap, cheerful, fun, mega competitive, but also a bit crazy. Um, I mean, how we didn't have a fatality, I don't know. Because, I mean, we rolled every single season. We, we, we bunged it on its roof every single year. And sometimes we absolutely snotted it, killed it completely. Um, and there was loads of other, because of the, the 205 back ends, bloody Pogo in about. Um, I remember talking with Russ Thompson's dad, John Thompson. And he was saying, it's like a false economy. You know, if you, if you allow us to have ProFlex, on the back end, it will actually work out cheaper in the long run because you won't be killing a car every bloody season. Because Russ was just as bad as Ian when Stanley. They, they were both bloody killing a car every year. Um, but no, it, it worked, it were immense. It were immense. So, 
just going back to that because there's probably a lot of people here who won't, won't really know about that championship what was the the theory behind it I mean I know Pat Flynn was wrong, <coughs> but what were the cars and, and, and what was the the structure behind the, the, the championship I mean I think the, the, the sort of biggest thing was we've all been there we've all done it you're there doing your rallying and it doesn't matter what car you've got someone's got a better one haven't they and that's the only reason that they're beating you it's not because you're a bit of a stump it's because they've got a better car than you have and you know if you had another 20 break you'd beat them so right simple solution everyone has the same car and it's basically i mean it's very much like a road rally spec 205 it was the group n challenge spec from from yesteryear the old 205 challenge which of course bought us the likes of martin rowe and richard burns and, and alistair mccray and uh, you know johnny milner all these big names made the name in the 205 challenge what well, they were with peugeot challenge wasn't it because like neil simpson ran a 309 didn't he uh, neil never made it in a peugeot no, no. <laughs> um, but it was it was it was a level playing field to be fun relatively cheap as cheap as stage rallying can be really um and the cars were identical and it didn't matter i mean there was some guy from down south and he'd gone to skip rounds and got like i mean blueprinting the blueprinting of the engines wasn't allowed but of course it's when's an engine when is an engine blueprinted and when is an engine blueprinted it's like a bit of a, a thing if you buy 10 scrap engines and weigh all the comrades you can probably get yourself a nice little set so that's blueprinting but it's not because you don't have to shave anything or what you know you're not you're not adding any weight you're not taking any weight away you're just purely matching everything and people were doing that this bloody bozo from down south i can't remember what his name was but don't matter he's gone he's history um he was most upset he's spent thousands and thousands of pounds and got nowhere um i forgot what i was saying <laughs> i forgot what was going but um it was a truly level playing field yeah you could you could put on more tires you could change the tires more often than your next guy but it wasn't going to make up that much difference it, you know if you had a, if you had a really sound engine from skip browns that was five brake horsepower up, up on the other guy it's not going to actually make that difference when he's a really good driver and you're a bit shit five brakes, especially in the woods it is not going to make a difference and and sure enough you could tell there were some people that turned up there in pretty shed like cars but would still do really really well because they were a good driver um which is really i mean isn't that what it's all about you know who's the better driver who's the better car driver um a little bit of mechanical sympathy can you nurse your car there's no point being mega mega quick but breaking it all the time although i mean kev <laughs> he had this we had this strange scoring structure where basically it didn't matter say it was a an eight stage event if you were fastest on seven stages and then turned it into a ball of snot on the on the, on the final stage that didn't matter you'd won that around because you were quickest up until that point <laughs> but this is because kev of course was, was famous for being blindingly quick and then eventually snotting it <laughs> so he he wanted a championship that's a shame he's not here to defend me <laughs> <laughs> had he had he you know he wanted a championship that had it been at those scoring sort of system when he was doing it he'd have won it which no i mean but it made everyone like you you, you push like hell because it was all about faster stage times i think the first we won the first three rounds i think or two rounds but we didn't because we weren't quickest because we were say third fastest on every single stage we won the rally but didn't win the 205 challenge part of it because some other guy would would be would have been first second on five out of six stages and then turned it into a buddy ball of scrap but he beat us but that was yeah we we knew the, what the scoring system was so it was, you know can't complain about it it is what it is um and then i think eventually the msa got wind of it we'd done it like that for about five years and they finally got hang on 
did, did you know in the blue book it says you basically can't recover we can't re you'll know this you can't reward people for going fast <laughs> <laughs> That's is not it? quite how it's... But, it's, but, it's, but it's, that's the gist, isn't it? Well, you can't. You can go racing. Yeah. And that's how it's going. It's good, yeah. It's so like you're going rallying, it's an aggregate. It's, it's the thing, you, you can't sort of <laughs> say... You'll they, they, see this, you'll say like... Um, I think Northwest Stages do it. They'll say best performance on the promenade, uh, Fleetwood promenade or whatever. They won't say whoever's the quickest. Because that ble breaks Blue Book's rules. So you have best performers. Oh, that just also happens to be the guy that was actually the quickest, but, you know. Uh, but, yeah. Strictly speaking, not either correct, but... <laughs> <laughs> going back to your own rally days, Neil, um, when, what year was it you took over from your dad as uh, Luke Nicholson? Was it 2004? Oh, well, uh, I didn't Let's really. dig into the controversy box. No! No, <laughs> <laughs> no we... Um, again, it was, we were at... Um, we were at Pendle. Pendle were 110% focused on the Lee Holland. That was all that Pendle were. The Lee Holland event at Tyke Rose. Uh, Anglesey Racing Circuit. Um, yeah, they did this, the hill climb, PCTs, auto test. I mean, they did a lot. They, they were doing a lot of things. When you think about it, basically, it was like sort of Rod Allen and Les and Ian Mills, and that's basically Pendle District Motor Club. Um, but we decided we were doing the road rallies. Bill Chadwick was doing the road rallies. We wanted to run a road rally, um, and it was like, no, no, we, we, we don't need because they, they used to run the John Stubbins, of course, and the summer rally and stuff like that. They, they weren't interested. But we kept on. We want. This is what we want to do. We, we want to run a road rally, um, and I sort of dragged me down. See, my dad didn't wasn't wasn't really involved. He pretty well quit. He'd done a few stage rallies with Stuart Newby. He'd done some with Ian Stanley. But he was pretty well on the way out. He decided it wasn't for him anymore. He was, he was calling it a day. Um, but then me going out with Abigail on the road rallies sort of rekindled his interest. So of course he did like full circle. He came back and did road rallies again with Bill Chadwick. I'll never forget, he used to, Bill used to run a, a Pinto Sierra estate it was a right shed and um he got this toolbox in the back a big old-fashioned metal toolbox and he was like batting down some country lane and this toolbox is like bouncing about thinking yeah if we go over this is gonna take our bloody sweet off <laughs> um but then that's the, the sort of yeah we rekindled my dad's sort of interest and um we did the beaver rally abigail and i did the beaver rally which you guys are about to do. And we were, I was just saying this to you. And uh, we had a huge argument. Um, you know, turn left. What, this left? No, no, not that left. The left on the right. <laughs> um, and it was like a vicious circle because she didn't like going quick. She's actually a brilliant navigator, but doesn't like speed or the loss of a night's sleep. And um, <laughs> so it's not really, not really suited to road rallies, but... And um, she would make a mistake. I would speed up to make up for that mistake. But the quicker I got, the more likely she was to make another mistake because she was getting fr scared. So of course, I'd then, she'd make a cock up, so I'd speed up. So it's just like, uh, you know, whoa. And we came back from, I was saying, sorry, we came back from Beverly, two hour drive along the M62, not a single word was spoken <laughs> the entire journey. So this was it, it was like a bit basically, oh, yeah, shit. You'll never, you are not a match for my skill. You are holding me back. I am forever in the novices with you. The only reason we moved up to the semis was because we won the novice award, I think, because nobody would bugger else had entered. Um, so my dad comes up with this, he'd been doing some events with Bill, so he comes up with this idea, what he would do. He would do the pre-plot events, because he liked them, that's old school. And Abigail could have the, uh, the plot and bash. Brilliant solution, you know. But my missus isn't like that. <laughs> She's like, basically, no, I'm not having these cast-offs. <laughs> um, do the whole bloody thing with your dad. I'm not, in, I'm not that interested. Cause, and she used to throw up as well. Uh, we used That's to- where you get it from. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, well, my dad used to throw up. 
My dad was. I mean, I, years and years ago, <laughs> we went. We went for a mucky weekend somewhere up in North Yorkshire. But I taken. I took some OS maps so we could like go for walks and see what was about. And I opened up this Mac map in bed, and there it were, circa 1970s little bits of sick. <laughs> <laughs> 20 years old <laughs> lovely um, so yeah so basically she sacked me off she said like no and then then yeah then we said but then we, we got the which way we started with the which way uh, 98 and he was always Clark of the which way and, and it, it got better and better and better it got easier and easier and easier and better and better and better um, I mean we stood up like a sore thumb I mean this is why the MSA weren't happy. All the other events locally were lucky if they got 30 cars. We had like 60 cars. They're not stupid down there. They're thinking, what the hell's going on here? Why is this one event getting double the entry of all the rest? Because it was bent as a nine bob note. Um, it was well hooky. Um, but that made us marked. And then the, the fateful year was 2004. Um, we, the 2003 was the best event ever. I think the winning guy dropped something like about, I think it was about, about 30 odd seconds, which is pretty well bob on. You, you, I mean, you want your winner almost to be clean. If, you, if, if, if the guy that comes first cleans, it proves it was cleanable. And then the next guy, say, dropped 30 seconds, and the next guy a minute, yeah. Happy days, you, that, that is absolutely bob on. You've, you've done it perfectly. Any idiot can do it and set it at 90 mile an hour and, and drop three minutes every section. That, that, there's no real skill in that. You want it to, well, you, you don't, you, you, know, you, you don't want it. But you don't have to go crazy, which some of the, some of the organizers were doing. They were going absolutely, there was a guy over in uh, Ripon and it were, it were 90 mile an hour average. One section, <clears throat> 150 mile event, 145 of it, 45 mile of it was cleanable and then one section at 90 mile an hour you know well, what's the bloody point in that might as well just done the just, just do the five miles and all fuck off home <laughs> you know um but it was um yeah 2004 he decided we would take it elsewhere we would move the event we, we'd done 98 and 97 to death and uh you know, we, we we would improve it. We would we would go places. We would do we would do. So we decided to go over to North uh, to West Yorkshire. Um, God, one o four. It was one ten ripping and yeah. baitings. Yeah. Um, oh, what a bloody disaster! Absolute disaster. I mean, it was. I'd sort of said that what they will do is ignore this. They'll park up and plot, and they'll turn. It was a pre-plot event, if you did it right. You did the first little bit of section pre-plot and then use the road section for the next section to plot and bingo, you, you'd be fine. You, you'd be rocking, but what they didn't, they all parked up and decided to plot the whole lot in one foul swoop. So they were late. They were all running into lateness. I think we had 13 finishers out of 60 cars. That was the year that got the uh, part of the spectrum with the cold install. Yeah. The MSA apparently got 18 telephone calls on the Monday morning. And despite running these completely hooky events all these years, we'd not got a problem. We'd never had a problem. Yeah, all right, you might get called, someone's been from the edge, totally sorry, we'll sort it out. But the MSA and the police weren't getting telephone calls. We were getting them, which is, that's fine. It's better, it's better that someone bloody chews your ear off than calls the MSA or the cops. Um, and... Um, yeah, that was it. But he said, like, basically, I've had enough. Because he was getting it in the neck. There was all the hassle afterwards. Um, but I, I, but I, well, I wasn't done. I had unfinished business. Because I knew that 2003 was belting. And I thought, what would make it even more belting would be a, a set of marked maps. No navigation whatsoever. 3, 2, 1, there you go, mate. Marked maps. Go for it flat out um, and then of course that's when I joined Bolton and we, we resurrected the Bolton Midnight in 2005 um, and we didn't have a problem it was bent as a nine bomb note but we didn't have a problem um, but of course it was 
the MSA you were not. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, as I said, the MSA, were, they, they were miffed, I should say, that, um, yeah, we should have called it a day in 2004. And we, well, I didn't. I mean, Dad, because he was ex MSA, he could see the writing on the wall. This is, ain't going to happen. So, um, but I was, I, was, I, was assist, I was deputy all the way, including 2004. The first time I was Clark was the bottom of midnight in 2005. It was a good idea, was it, to put the, uh, the laughing bike up to the Malamela sign near the uh, <laughs> airfield left? Was that on the... Um, <laughs> <laughs> that would be happening for years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That wasn't I, anything I, new. I to remember it. before you go over Lawsdale, that went gone because that'd be happening for years. I, I remember one near um <laughs> Fort and <laughs> Services. Have been doing that for years. Yeah, Fort and Services. He even bought a house just down the road to cover that. <laughs> <laughs> he cowled in hairpin, bloody hell. You had to go past so, it, didn't you? <clears throat> you didn't do the hairpin. Yeah, you carried you, on, no, you and then you did the airpin, no, and then you, come flying you, back. You did if you knew how to do it. <laughs> and all the speckies so, were there like, ah! <laughs> so <laughs> let, let, let me take you back a bit, because um, you, you keep mentioning your dad, but we haven't really talked about any of any of the things that your dad did. And to be fair, he did an awful lot, didn't he? He was oh, yeah. Clark, of course, on mole. He was, uh, well, I'll, you, yeah. You tell I mean, us some of the things your dad did. I, I think... I think he is sort of like a, a distinction of he was Clark of the course on the Loomis, Devils and Mull, three motoring news rounds, which as far as I'm aware has not ever been done before. Um, or since. Yeah, or, yeah. <laughs> or I mean, ever will be, he, he was nobody else is daft enough. He was a brilliant organizer. He always he always said to me I mean no, I'm biased, I know I'm biased, but um, he said so the best when I'm gone and when I finish I don't want to be remembered as a navigator or a core driver. I want to be remembered as an organizer because that's what he was best at. You know, I mean, all the, all the way, I mean, like, I mean, obviously they created the, the Lakeland stages. Now the Malcolm Wilson, um, there was, I mean, I think the reason he got the Loomis was really Tony Mason was running the Loomis for Morecambe and my dad, I mean, a bit, a bit cocky and arrogant. Um, not a bit, nothing like myself. <laughs> but um, he he decided that he this is Tony Mason. This is the guy that's won the RAC rally. Bearing in mind, I mean, he's he, you know, I mean, he's up there. My dad's this young, relative newcomer to Morecambe and Carpet. Um, no, no. <laughs> and um, but they wouldn't. They was like, no, we're not having some young upstart taking over our our baby, our jewel in the crown. So they gave him an event called the Buller Trophy, I believe. Um, which yeah because it, and it did really well so then they're thinking actually this young guy is actually the real deal so let's give him the loomies um, and I think they won like awards for like being, being, being best um, I mean again it was similar with Mull my dad went up to Mull as a steward um, and probably had a little bit too much to drink and said to Brian Molyneux this could be so much better <laughs> this could be a really really good event so I mean Brian's like right you do it you know come on put your money where your mouth is and of course yeah, they, they did do you know as a team there was themselves and Taffy and Fred Bent and all these people you know made the event better and better and better you know as a team um, improving it um, until so obviously the, the event it is now you know I mean it's still still roughly the same isn't it I mean it's, you haven't got much option up there it's going to be roughly the same sort of format uh, I, I love that I think a couple of years ago I think when Ian Campbell took over there was all this talk of new roads new routes on Mull I was like wow what what have they done have they added some new roads in <laughs> no <laughs> I but yeah, I found a new stage. <laughs> oh, there is, I, mean, I, put it, I, I didn't. I'm trying to think what year it was. 2005, I think, with this guy from down south, and he had this BDA escort. No, no, tell her, no. It was a YB Cosworth escort, um, and I wasn't expecting great shakes, but I thought it'd be about it'd be all right, you know. And it was Dougie Hall's old YB Cosworth in this Mark II, and yeah, it should be all right. It should be it should be good for a do this. 
and we did the recce and his Citroen Zara estate and um, for some unknown reason he booked digs at Croggan. And I don't know if you've ever been, you come off the ferry, turn left, drive bloody miles and miles and miles, then turn another left and you come down to this arse end of the universe. That's Croggan. Um, but you could have a good belling stage from there back up, but it'd only be one way. You'd have to drive all the cars down and then bring them back up. But it's a bit, bit, bit cracking. It's a really good little road. But um, we, we started off on the event Friday night. You know, you're all bloody, whoa, really keyed up, set off, going, driving along. And I'm sort of like, you know, I don't know, right three, 50, left three over crest. And so like, you're all right, you're right. Yeah, 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 fine. So I'm carrying on, carrying on. He was slower in the Escort than they were in the Citroen Zara estate. It were unreal. Um, we were tired on the first night, thank God. He broke his clutch. I'm telling you about how to do clutchless gear changes and calling the notes as we're driving along. There was like a double hairpin. I'm saying, right, you're going double hairpin here. Do not change up to second. Do not change up to second. Right, hairpin left, hairpin. He changes up to second. Oh, now what? That's what we we'll wait now until we get hit. <laughs> I said, I ain't getting out of this car until there's a car behind us. And uh, Kim Baker, Barker, Baker, Baker, came up behind us. She was like, hey! I was like, right, I'll get out of the fag now. <laughs> um, and uh, we got caught and passed an hard ton. This is a 200, <laughs> this, is, this is the 250 brake horsepower Escort. And you got caught and passed an hard ton <laughs> by the Constantines. And he's like, oh, there's a car behind me. I said, like, fucking passed. He shot off. Oh God! Do we? So um, and then I phoned up the the uh, the youth hostel down in Tobe. Was there any council? Have they gone home? Yeah, yeah. Someone snotted the car on Friday night. They're gone. Cool. We'll have the room. The crew from Crogan phoned up. Oh, we can fix this clutch cable. Hey, you might be. I mean, pub, I'm pissed as a fart. <laughs> Ain't rallying anymore. See ya. Never spoke to him again. But no, my dad, yeah, I mean, he was, he was like yourself, was rally committee's man. Uh, vice chairman of the rallies committee under Dennis Cardell. And of course, this was in the era when they, they did away with Tiger timing. I mean, this is like war in our, you know, war in our times, isn't it? To kill Tiger timing. Uh, the biggest thing. I mean, it were, I mean, I remember bloody motor news you went to back page but as soon as you got the motor news straight to the back page see who'd won rl brown so you know see who'd won bloody loony see who'd won whatever uh kill wind egg it were massive but my dad had this thing that it weren't good for the the future oh, oh. um bloody hell. right uh, well, you have like BBC time, obviously, and you've got a two mile section, so you've got four minutes to do it in. So you start that section at 12 o'clock. It's a two mile section. You're due at the next control at 12.04. Bingo. What could be simple? That's 30 mile an hour average for that stage. But what they did with target timing is if you were car one, for example, you were due at that control at 12.01. You were also due at the next control two miles further on at 12.01. So you kept that 12.01 all the way through the rally. But it was a great way of masking the speed. Because you could screw the clocks. So that clock's running... That wasn't quite how it worked, Neil. <laughs> but I can see your thoughts on it. <laughs> but you you could... clearly weren't doing rallies in 80s. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> but you could, you, could, you could screw the clocks so that they were like, and then the mileage. I mean, we, always, we never screwed the clocks on the which way ever. We screwed the mileage, never the clocks. Um, people would say, oh, this clock's wrong. And you're like, no, the clock's right. Trust me. Um, but basically, it masked the speed, so you could do ridiculous speeds. on. I mean, they were, if you sort of think Mull or the Jim Clark or the Manx, that's what the whole trophy would have been like now. Had, uh, the the Cadronian. Back, back in 87, they were out and out road races. Yeah. They were, well, they were, they were using slicks. Back in the very early 80s, they were using Group 4 cars. Mm. They were out in 82, 82. Well, yeah, I did it with like 82. Formula RS2. 
that Formula RS2000 effectively. Well, they were, yeah. they were 185 tyres. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, like the of the course car. 84 yeah. in Morgan Road. You didn't need a course car, you pulled a white flag. Yeah. <laughs> but it, well, it was getting very, very fast. So my dad and others, he wasn't on his own, um, decided that the best thing to do, rather than tinkering, and they kept on, they were, they were tinkering around the edges, oh, we'll reduce the number of spot lamps, we'll reduce the tyre widths, we'll reduce, and it was all anything to keep the beloved road rally. And I'm a road rallyist at heart, you know, I'm not against it, far from it, if, you know, I mean, I tried, we tried to make the which way as near as possible to the old days as we could get away with. Um, and more successful events do. You go to an event that's, that's successful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the way it is. Uh, but yeah, so he was. Don't he forget, was, it's going out on the web. This. Oh. That's <laughs> why um, right, so I'm pursuing an anchor anyhow. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't want to join you in it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was. Um, yeah, he was he was vice chairman of the uh, RAC Rallies Committee, chairman of the BTRDA Rallies Committee. Um, he, he, you know, he, he put a lot in and he enjoyed it. Um, and you know, what more, what more do you want, really? I mean, it's like, yeah, you know. Did you get a lot of bank roll for being one of these Oh hell, I yeah, yeah. Oh, he was. I mean, he was very much. He was poacher turned gamekeeper. Uh, Dave Oric in night moves. They were mates. They used to go for lunch in in Lancaster, you know, most business, most days. And he put something in night moves about basically saying he was my dad was responsible for for killing off Road Rally. Um, and I think solicitors got involved, and they were mates. I mean, I went up to a thing with Dave Oric with um, at Kirby Longsdale, and he was still slagging my dad off. Forty years plus, fifty years, I don't know, forty years plus. Now they're like still bloody going on about it, and you're like, well. Door. It's only 30 years ago that we banned it. Well, when, when, was, 80, 8, no, when was it? 80, 86? 87. When, did, when was that? 30 years ago. 30 years ago, right. But it, it was like, I said, well, you're all right, Dave. I said, you, you've had the last laugh. I said, sort of thing. He, he's Gaga. He doesn't even know anything. So you, you won, you know. Uh, but no, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't about, you know, then. I wasn't competing. I was only, I was only a nipper. Um, but you can see, the love for that era is still there now. These books that um, what's his name keeps on doing. Big brain. That's it. Uh, there's a passion for that era, and it's still going up. There's no way that um, in 20 years' time people will be talking about the 2002 which way rally. It'll be completely and utterly forgotten about. They are down at Cornwall, but still talking about it. <laughs> but it, you know, it, it's just it's just not the same, and it won't ever be the same. Um, you know, I mean, the two or fives. I think, yeah, twenty years from now, people will dig out some old pictures of some snotty two or five GTIs and be like, yeah, bloody hell, I remember this. God, they were maniacs. Um, I mean, we used to, yeah, we we took over rallies. Um, I remember talk, phoning up Bruce when he was running Wheaton. We'd lost Otterburn. Uh, <laughs> so I phoned up Bruce, and Bruce and I weren't the best of mates. <laughs> I remember him nutting me in the mish. Um, no, that's not true. <laughs> no, he is. No, he didn't. No. He, was, no, he, he had you about there. He st <laughs> I was stood having a wee, and he came up behind me and did that thing where he grabs you and sort of thing. So I'd said the, basically, like, F off your F. C, your fat fat C, um, and yeah, he took it. He took offence to that, so he nutted me. Um, so yeah, we weren't best of mates, um, but we were coming up. We'd lost Otterburn. Pat was like, "Do you know any events?" Pat Flynn said, "Do you know any events?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah, hang on." So I gave Bruce a call, and he's probably thinking, "Oh, what the hell is this tosser one?" Um, I said, "Basically, what you mean he didn't say that?" To you? No, no, That's no, not no. Like Bruce. <laughs> Bruce. I said, "You know." I, how are you doing when we eating? Oh, yeah, 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 it's real. Yeah, yeah. we're, we're running, we're definitely running. I said, but we're a bit low on entries. Well, how do you fancy 60 cars coming to do it? Or 50 cars, I can't remember what it was. It was like, well, it was like yeah, basically, whose grandma do I have to kill? Um, and we did, we turned up. And great, great day sport, you know. I mean, yeah, it weren't Otterburn, but it was, we had, we had, a, we had a good laugh. Um, but no, no, I mean, my dad, as I say, he didn't, 
he actually sort of quite discouraged me as well really I mean I'd say I'm going to go and do this event I'm going to go and do mid Wales well the rally's on Saturday yeah but Ian's setting off at midday with the car and the trailer for scrutiny and I want to be with him well you don't need to be there get a car driver you can do a full day's work on Friday <laughs> and then set off and join them in the bar after. Yeah, but, yeah, but that's how I miss all the like camaraderie by the time I get there it'll be bloody bedtime so um, no no it was quite a pain in the arse actually and we had a big do about I mean it was going it was bloody mull it's going up to do mull why are you taking a week off to do mull See, you used to go up for two, you used to go up for a week in Easter as, as a family great family holiday you know wife kids right there you are you're in Tobermora you said that I'm going to drive around the island sort of making bloody map notes and, and planning planning that year's event um, with that? <laughs> but, but he, but he grizzled he grizzled to me because I was taking sort of six days off um, to go and do more. That's where you went wrong. You see, you should have should have been taking more. Should have gone with him and, and followed in the footsteps. Well, as I say, I had no interest. I never had any interest in rallying. It just wasn't for me. Um, probably be about 78, 79. I think Morecambe or Kirby were running Grisdale for the uh, RAC as it was. And my dad, very kindly, he had a clipboard and he got all the top crews to sign this Lakeland Stages note paper. I mean, you had everyone, Stig Blomquist, Harry Vatanen, Hanny Mikola, Voldegaard, Tony Pond, the, the full bloody Monty were on there. He gave it me and I was like, oh, he's not thanks very much, but I was like, mm, it's not bloody racing drivers, is it? It's not Mario Andretti or Gilles Villeneuve, is it really? Some guy with some unpronounceable name from Finland. Um, but yeah, I wasn't interested. But as I say, you, you never know how things turn out, do you? Really? I thought years. I mean, a bit of name dropping. Years and years ago, Phil Short was round our house having tea, and he was saying, "Oh, I presume you're going to get into rally in you know? And I was probably about eight. Or something. No, no, no. It's dirty and sort of down here rallying. I don't want to do any of that. I want to go racing. And, uh, and he was like, "Yeah, I was the same." <laughs> Not on my own. So, after the 205, what happened then? Um, well, I mean, the 205 in itself was a bit of a, a long drawn out affair. I mean, it started in 2002. Every single year, Ian and I were leading the 205 challenge at some point during the season. And every single year we lost it. Um, and we just kept on trying it and trying and trying it. And it was like, well, what do we have to do to win this thing? Other people were winning it, retiring, and then actually coming back. And we still hadn't won it. But we were always there or thereabouts in the mix. Because, I mean, Ian, Ian's a very, very good driver. Uh, and it, it was probably thanks to him that I got better as a core driver. If I'd have been sat with somebody else who was a little bit more laid back about it all, I wouldn't have bothered I wouldn't have put in the, the work needed to get better I'd have been like do I go to bed at 10 o'clock after having a couple of pints or do I actually stay up until three in the morning get absolutely legless and then probably miss the start because I was still in bed um, you wouldn't I wouldn't have done that with Ian because I would got the bloody wheel brace around my face um, but eventually we won it in 2006 and I'd always said when we win it, I'm out. I couldn't afford it anymore. It was just costing too much money. Um, <laughs> well, you, you know Ian. You reckon I'd get a free run with Ian? <laughs> um, and you found some way of getting it back out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I, I mean, this whole thing with free runs, it's all a bit of a... What's the word? What do you mean? Tell so, charging, yeah. <laughs> a sore so, a so point with a lot of crews. I don't pay. Not because I'm like, oh, I'm a bloody superstar. You know, Neil By doesn't pay. I'll do the old Zatlan thing. I'll talk about myself in the third person. You know, Neil By doesn't pay. No, it's just I can't afford it. I'm not going to dig, by the way. No, 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 no. <laughs> no I mean, you, you know, it's there. It, it, it keeps on cropping up. I can't afford to rally and pay even half the entry fee. So I've got a choice, I either rally for free or I don't rally. And that's it. Um, 
and I'm upfront about it. There's no lies. There's no, oh, I'll pay the entry fee, I'll pay the hotel, I'll pay for the tyres. And then after the event, somebody's scarper, you know, which I believe happens. Ooh, we go to hell. Oh, I don't that know. That would be an Ashley, would it? <laughs> um, well, there's, a few, there's, there's more than one. There's, there's more than a few <laughs> people doing this, which is, I mean, that's bang out of order. They know with me what they get. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's it, really, basically. Is, yeah, I, I, I say it's not because I think I'm shit hot. It's not because of my name and reputation. I mean, because I say, I mean, not long after we won the 205s in two, 2006. Ian, I said I'm, have, I'm out. I'm having I'm having a year out, sort of thing. I didn't. I ended up really doing more events, I think, in 2007 than I'd done in 2006. But Ian then swapped seats. He co drove for Christine in the same 205, and then Ian was sort of like obviously getting the itch again. So we came back in the BMWs, but it never really worked for us in the BMW. I don't know why, because Ian was a rear-wheel drive guy originally with his Sunbeam and Avenger, but it just didn't work. We were never sort of more than about second, third, fourth. We weren't going to win it. Um, and uh, of course we crashed. We wrote, we wrote one off at Mambi completely, did a Dukes of Hazard, went over this big berm and did a big, big full flip in midair, landed on back, uh, landed on roof on my side, of course, on the pillar. Some guys got us back on. We then crabbed around the stage. We came in. Pat Flynn was having a bloody fit. He's like, brilliant, you rolled it and you were 26th fastest. Like, yeah, we've only done one lap, Pat. <laughs> um, so, but not long after that, we, I, I went and did an event with uh, Otterburn. I can't remember who it was. But I went and did this event with Otterburn, and someone's came up to me. Um, I was with Sam Collis, and this guy was saying, Oh, yeah, Neil Barney, yeah, yeah. And you used to be fast, you, didn't you? And you're like, This is two years ago. This is like, this is it for future. Yeah, you were the man. Now you're not. <laughs> um, and so I'm still laughing now. Uh, really Sorry? Did anyone actually progress? Um, yeah, well, I mean, it depends what you mean by progress. I mean, in terms of like, well, paid drivers. Well, I know obviously Russ did uh, as well. Well, I mean, I mean Russ obviously did the, we, we started, we did the BRC challenge. I sat in with Russ and then, um, but yeah, it weren't, it weren't quite meshing. Quite right. Russ is a great guy, loving a bit. Um, but yeah, you get that. I, I'd done well with with Ian. Russ had done well with uh, Andy Murphy and Ashley. But when we were together, it didn't quite mesh. Um, but we didn't fall out. We just went our separate ways. We did the BRC challenge, and then, he, and then I think he won it either the year after or the year after that with with Smurf. So he won like the junior bit. Uh, I mean, obviously, Chris Hall won the challenge and went up and did well on Mull. But yeah, then I think he decided he wanted to. Is it DJing or music or something he's into? I think. God knows. Um, yeah, I mean, depends what, I'd say it depends what you mean by progress. I mean, there's that. I mean, obviously, Bit Russ is now doing the BTRDA. There's plenty of guys that were quick in the, um, the 205s that have then gone on and still been quick. I mean, Jamie Anderson's doing BRC. Hey, I don't want to stop you mid no, 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 no. Well, there's a lot of empty lasses around. Yeah. Shall we have a 15 minute beer break and then we'll come back? Brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
Are you bloody fagging it out there, you lot? While we stopped then, I just noticed something that I was a bit, a bit concerned about. And then I realised that somebody must have won something. I, uh, I take it you're, uh, you're sporting the under-17s uh, hoodie because you won it. Rob? Yeah. So go on. Fastest time of day by any chance, was it? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, well done. Not just that, ask me about Preston's. Well, <laughs> you won that as well, did you? Yeah, careful, you're following in uh, father's footsteps here. He, he was as cool. So that's easy. What did you get a stick? to beat you. <laughs> well done. Congratulations. <laughs> right, Neil, come back. <laughs> so, you mentioned earlier on that you were, you were rather good on two wheels. No, <laughs> I but, thought I was. <laughs> but where did all that start? Oh, well, where there was. Where did you get your first scooter from? Well, no, my first one. <laughs> we had a. Um, I I used to catch chickens f for money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there was the, the North Country poultry in Garstang um, and they used to have chicken catchers and you went out of an evening and basically going, going to these like shippings and you'd get seven chickens, four in one hand and three in the other and you put them in this plastic box and you go back and get another seven and you bung them in this box. I mean terribly cruel for all these vegans and stuff but it's <laughs> Um And they used to give me about 200 quid cash in hand, bearing in mind I was 15, 16, 17. This is why I became an alcoholic. I <laughs> uh, had all this money and nothing to spend it on. So I bought myself a DT175 field bike, Yamaha. I used to ride it around Garstang and Caldervale and Scorton for years, illegally. Um, it was great. I remember once the Caldervale policeman pulled me up and I kept I gave him my brother's details because he was a year older than me, so he was legal. Um, and then I got pulled again. There was a bit of a theme there, wasn't it? Yeah. Said you've been doing that for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Said like I'm 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 Jonathan By blah blah blah. You know you know debt of birth and all this sort of stuff. And then um, I kept on he kept on pulling me because I was a, I was a good idiot. I mean I got done um, August Gala and Garstang. They have like the May not May Queen but like a gala fair fate. I went out, I had a 350LC and I went down Bloody High Street. It was absolutely heaving, six deep on the pavement. I went down the high street before the floats came down on back wheel. <laughs> um, no helmet. I got bloody six points. Um, dangerous driving. But um, yeah, yeah, I was a bloody hero though. It was worth it. Um, and then my, then my brother got nicked. He was he was legal riding his his motorbike. Uh, couple of pulls him up, right? You know I want you to be, uh, who you would name details. Blah blah blah. blah. J Jonathan By, uh, Scorton, You know blah, blah. no no I know Jonathan By. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's he's got bleached hair, little lad. My brother's about six two, six foot three with ginger hair. <laughs> So this is like, yeah, nothing like, I mean, bloody milkman job, obviously. Um, and, uh, and he's like, no, I am, I am, I, I am Jonathan Bight. And he was like, no, you're not. He said, I know Jonathan Bight. You know, I know him well, mate, you're not him. <laughs> so then he goes, then he has to go to Garstown Police Station with all his documents with his birth certificate and his driving license and all this sort of stuff. And then cops like, you are Jonathan Bight. 
well, who's that wee guy with the bleached hair then? <laughs> and our kid's like, don't know. <laughs> Yeah, he stabbed me with a screwdriver when he got home. Um, but then I all became legal. I, I, I uh, inherited my brother's bike. But so it, after oh, you lost your license? You no, 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 no. Because you legal um, I, I became legal. I was old enough to ride a motorbike, 16. Um, and I, I, I inherited this bike and it was crap. Oh, it was horrible. It was a proper, more, proper slow ped. 30 mile an hour job with a restrictor. But I remembered there was this lovely Suzuki, this black, sleek, with bloody expansion chamber exhaust on it. Mildly and, tuned. Oh, loony tunes. <laughs> and it were quick. It were the quickest moped in the country, you know. But it belonged to somebody called Steve Cotton. So, quick telephone call to Steve. Hey, what happened to that bike? You know, because I assumed he must have sold it. Well, it's up in my attic, in bits. Will you rebuild it for me? And I was a bit like, oh. Oh, he obviously wanted these bloody palm crossing uh, for the time and effort. But ah, yeah, then, uh, so yeah, so that was my first proper bike. I got it from Steve. And how long did you use it for? Well, I had it for, um, I kept it for quite a while because it was as quick as a 125 or at least a 100. <laughs> what was it, a 75 or 80? 80, a Suzuki GT50, but with this kit on it, yeah, big kit on it. and it was good for <laughs> it was good for like 60 mile an hour. Well, probably, <laughs> probably had. Uh, I'm a bit heavier than you, <laughs> carrying the carrying the weight, um, and everyone else had fizzies and uh, and APs, and this thing was just yeah, it was just wick. And it looked brilliant, I must admit. A little bikini fairy on, all black. Um, and I ran that, I mean, I think when I was 17, they went to move up to a 125. I didn't for a while because that was still just as quick as most of the guys' 125. But um, I was working at Paul Gardner's. He had a clay pigeon shoot, a uh, skeet shoot. And this thing. What, and you were, you were what they were shooting at? No, I, 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 was, I was in the traps. I used to, <laughs> used to sit there with my old, with my old Walkman, bloody pulling this lever, tabbing it like mad, pull, pull, and, um, and then occasionally you get a go on the guns as well. I mean, I don't know if anyone's ever been to Paul Gardner's engine tune, but he had, I don't know if he still has, but he had an extensive armory. Sten guns, bloody M16s, or uh, well, M uh, what am I thinking? No, M16s, Peugeot's the MI16, isn't it? Uh, <coughs> but yeah, my bike, because, I don't know, whoever, whoever built it obviously hadn't bothered that much with the ignition barrel, so you could start it with a 10 pence piece. You didn't, the key was superfluous. You could do it with your thumbnail. So someone nicked it from the top of Paul's. And I went up and it went bloody gone. Uh, so there was a guy called Paul Fairclough. He had a pale blue Mark II with I think a Rover V8 in it. Fishmonger. His brother had a GS 1100. He had a 600 Crosswell when I was about that. Right. Possibly. But he had a pale blue Escort. And Paul had this, what, what, I'm trying to think what kind of Peugeot it was. It was shit, it was horrible. It was 305 or 304. It was a, it was a little one. It was, it was smaller than that. The 504 was what they used in the Safari, wasn't it? Yeah, no, it wasn't the one with the triangular headlamps. It was the, the smaller version of that. So we all set off razzing round Trophy Ball and an Irish end, trying to catch up and find my stolen motorbike. And I've never been driven as quickly. Paul was bloody awesome. Paul Garner, he raced, um, what, Formula 5000? Racing cars? Formula Atlantic. Yeah, go, I mean, go say way, way, but I mean, I think he'd done a bit of rallying, but he was more a racing guy. Mm. Um, I mean, we got introduced to him in the, uh, probably not the, not the fleece, the other one. I navigated on his first time, it was six overall. Yeah. Yeah. 
they were very I mean it was just unreal and it weren't it weren't flamboyant you know you get you, you get people like that you, you know there's some drivers that are really um, there's that guy what's his name up in the Manx with the Nova Chucker <laughs> and you watch that I mean it's a brilliant video you have to watch it if you, you know. and he's throwing that thing around like bloody billy or and then you see other people and they're just neat tidy no fuss but probably set in like virtually the same stage times just, just two different ways of skinning a cat in it really um, but Paul was unbelievably quick um, I mean again I mean I got introduced my parents introduced me to Paul it was like this guy basically was a mechanic working on Formula 3 and Formula Super V cars then I managed to get a goal and proved himself quicker than the regular driver which I think was that Graham, Graham Hill got I think, I'm sure that's how Graham Hill got started. Uh, mechanic turned, then turned his hand to it and was better than the rest. So, I mean, of course, then going full circle back to you, James Hunt, I'm thinking, right, that's the way I've got to do it. Then, obviously, you know. But yeah, I mean, if if I can't fix it with a mallet and duct tape, I'm stuffed. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, no, no. I mean, I enjoy my bike days, but uh, I keep on hankering, keep on saying I'm going to get another bike. I'm going to get another bike. Go. The world's but, not uh, ready for you. Yeah. Or, the world or, is not ready for you. Well, it's, it's like, what is it the doctors call them? Organ donors. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so let's jump forward a bit. So what are you doing now? I'm sat here in... <laughs> no, no. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm just... Um, just enjoying my rallying. I'm not chasing any championship. Um... I'm not sort of hoping to be the next bloody big thing. Just enjoying it. I mean, um, the, what, what I've tended to do, I mean, in the past, I've tended to do quite a lot of events, say like pretty well one a month. Um, I tend to think anything more than one a month is starting to push it a little bit at home. There was a few years back, I'd done seven weekends on the bounce. Rally, rally, recce, rally, rally, rally. And somebody phoned me up and said, do you fancy doing the Scottish? And I was thinking, mm, I do, but I best not. And then I asked Abigail, I said, uh, I said, oh, this guy wants me to do it Scottish. I turned it down. Wise move. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I said, she'll never see this because she's not in the least bit interested in rallying. Even though, as I said, she's you a think brilliant, not? No, brilliant navigator. We can actually tell how many people are watching this, you know. And but she doesn't. Are. Oh, she'll be in bed. She'll be fast asleep. Um, we can, of course, record this and send it to her. She said, no. Uh, <laughs> Stevie asked me to do Otterburn. He said, oh, he said, we're doing Otterburn. Do you fancy it? We're going up. I'll have a bit of a giggle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, the thing is, I said, it's, it's, it is, I think, Otterburn's recce Saturday, rally Sunday. On the Tuesday, I go away on holiday in August. And I said to Abigail, I said, Stevie's asked me to do Otterburn. I said, but it's a bit close to holiday, isn't it? And she's like, yeah. She says, you're like a bear with a sore head before you go away because you're trying to get set everything up ready for whilst you're away for two weeks. So you know yourself, it's a stupid idea. Don't bloody do it. And I said, ah, yeah, I, I, I did think as much. So you can see her thinking like, hey, he's finally growing up. It's, it's finally happening. You know, he's, he's starting to get this. Oh. What I'd done though is I told Steve, I said, right, the answer is no, officially. But shock horror, 10 days before the event, he lets you down. <laughs> so, can't leave a mate hanging, can you? <laughs> so I'm doing out of <laughs> <laughs> um, You didn't really just admit that. Oh, aye. She won't, as I say, she's not. Just, <laughs> she will. Somebody else will probably tell her. One of my many enemies off Brit British Rally she Forum. she doesn't know, I'll make sure she The, the thing is, <laughs> they won't be able to find her through my Facebook because she unfriended me about three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I was, um, this is sad all to do with rallying. <laughs> I was looking for a receptionist and, and this is the way nowadays when you're employing staff what you tend to do is you, you hunt them down on Twitter and Facebook just to see what you're getting the real person and I'm glad I did that sounds all wrong <laughs> <laughs> I found one of them I mean she'd applied for this job as a receptionist and there's a picture of a Facebook thing it's a 20 week scan she's up the duff so I'm sort of like glad I did but some of the pictures of the girls that were applying they were quite Facebook pictures, a bit risque. And there was a brilliant one, lovely side boob. <laughs> so that went up. 
<laughs> on Facebook. Hey, this lass has applied for a job. And of course, all the, the blokey blokes are like, oh, I've come to yours for a pair, you know, I've come for a pair of eyes, pair of uh, glasses from you, if, if that, that was the case. Yeah, Abigail took offence, so she unfriended me. <laughs> but it's great because I can say what the hell I like, because she never sees it. You've never been frightened of saying what you right. like. <laughs> people, pe people are sort of going to Abigail saying, oh, do you see that stuff? Me, I put up on Facebook. No, never see anything. Uh, one, of the, one of our uh, kids' mothers friended me on Facebook. And I said to her, I said, you don't really want to be a friend of mine on Facebook. I'm telling you that, you do not want it. And then Abigail piped up, yeah, you don't. Trust me, you don't. Uh, but she stuck with it and she's still, still a friend, actually. So she, she must be more tolerant than her missus. But no, I she's mean, she's not feeding anything back, is she? No, no, never. Oh, no, no. <laughs> she, gets, she gets a bit of a rum deal of it. Um, but I mean, it's, I do my thing, she does her thing. She looks after the kids, I go rallying. That seems like a fair swap. Um, and I'm doing the Manx with Tony. And Tony, Tony. Mr. Shields. Mr. Shields, your friend. Um, I'm amazed he asked me back. I thought I did shit. So am I, after what I told him about it. <laughs> um, but bloody good driver. Oh yes. Very good driver. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know how good he was. It was only after agreeing on the phone to sit in with him and then people were saying, do you know who he is? No, no, no. So, some, some bloke from Brighouse. So I know. And I said, no, th this guy used to win motoring news rounds in a 1300 and over. Uh, marine drive, I couldn't keep up. I lost my bloody place on the notes. I haven't done that in years. But he couldn't keep up with him. Um, and this is only in a two wheel drive car. Yeah. Yeah. Two wheel drive, two litre car. To Astra, yeah. I mean, a nice bit of kit. But, um, no, no, I was, I was um, very, very pleasantly surprised. And yes, yeah, so we're doing the doing the international in September. As I said, I've got Otterburn. Well, I haven't got Otterburn, but I've got Otterburn. Um, well, you may have Otterburn. <laughs> <laughs> you may not now. Oh, it's too late now. I've, <laughs> I've booked it off work. It's done. It's a done deal. It's a fair complete. <laughs> Until she breaks your legs when <laughs> you get home tonight. <laughs> no, she'll she'll just tut and raise her eyebrows, <laughs> roll her eyes a bit. I'm used to it. Um, the living fuck out of you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, actually, one thing I've um, I was just talking with Pete earlier on, and um, what I am enjoying is doing events abroad. I've never never really considered the Isle it of before. Man isn't abroad. No, no. Um, I, know it's, I know it's a plane ride. Belgium and, and Spain <laughs> and there's plans afoot, which again, Abigail hasn't a clue about, but there's plans afoot to go and do Barbados uh, next year. And it's it's just nice to go somewhere different. Why, why go to Barbados? The rest of Lancashire's in Barbados. <laughs> it doesn't seem like that. <laughs> uh, I was hoping Nigel was going to come to that. I was going to pick his brains a little bit. Um, but no, it's, it's just nice doing these foreign events um because it's different it's new it's that sort of spirit of adventure um the way you were you know when you did your first ro welsh road rally driving over there to some bloody weird place in bloody uh, what was that limp and inch or something like that um rather than just doing wheat and doing angles doing mull even you know doing mull 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 i love mull don't get me wrong it's my favorite event ever nothing will top it ever um but if you keep on doing it you get a bit bored of it um have you found that jim get bored on mull <laughs> i can't get bored there <laughs> no, to be fair, no. <laughs> I, I think it's just I, I mean, I'm, I've got a very, very low boredom threshold. There was a thing oh, about the... Must have. <laughs> <laughs> there was a thing, um, you know, uh, Bottas got done for the jump start. Well, someone had created this app, basically, where you, you press it with your mouse and the red lights come in and when they go off, you press your button and the average is about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 seconds. I got bored waiting. <laughs> I looked away and I thought, oh, shit, and pressed it. And I thought... That's going somewhere really to to lose interest in quarter of a second. <laughs> so attention span of a gnat. Um, like sex. Oh, I had time for a fag after. Um, no, I, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed going to these foreign events. Um, it's just it's just something new and different. 
um, different terrain, different ways of doing things, not necessarily better, not necessarily worse. Um, and as I say, I mean, I went and did an event I would have never thought in a million years I would have done. Uh, I can't remember when it was. Last month, May, May, it was in May, I did the Manx. Yeah, that was good for bloody business, wasn't it? A week off to do the Manx, a week back at work, and then a week in Spain, doing this Trasmeria, Transmeria event. Um, and it's non-competitive. At least you got to talk to Jane all the way over on flight. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I tried to, she had this pink helmet, her Stilo helmet is all pink. So I'm sending her messages on. I'm saying on Facebook, put your helmet on. Come on, I dare you. In the in the plane, sit there with your fucking helmet on in the plane. <laughs> T tell the person next to you you're a bad flyer. <laughs> uh, but she wouldn't. She said, "No, it's in the locker." I was like, oh, no, no, "Put it on. It'd be a giggle." Um, but um, yeah, so, so, it's, so I did this so, trans trans so let's put this in perspective. Non-competitive. All the way over to the Isle of Man, you were come, trying to convince Jane Nichol to play with the pink helmet. <laughs> Oh, only a little bit. I wouldn't, okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put my phone on. They, they reckon it mucks with the flight. <laughs> um, although I've done one of them, um, you know, them cycling, jogging type apps where it records what you've done. No, no it's like a um, cy cycling thing, like your speed no, and your driving. average speed and all, that, and your incline, you know, your uh, incline. So, of course, yeah, they say you must not have your phone connected, whatever you do. I think, ah, I can't, I can't do that much harm nowadays can it so i've done it setting off on the planes going on holiday so you're doing 600 miles an hour you've traveled like so many miles and it's just like well done you've burnt like 800 calories <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, that's like three quarters of a mars bar it's like sod that i'd just have the mars bar and forget the bloody cycling uh, but no i, I did i did this event you could do 600 miles an hour <laughs> on a push bike I did this event in Spain and as I say, I would have never ever in a million years thought I would have done it before I did it um, because it was non-competitive. There's no winners, there's no trophies, there's no times, no stage times, nothing. You just go there and ponce about and that's what I thought. But I it worked. So it's a track day on, well, it's, it's on a, a rally stage? Yeah, I mean, well, I think there is a, a, a demo event, I think they call it. Um, it was Gary G who sort of got us in the Lorraine that got us involved in that. Um, and um, <laughs> and uh, it was great. Do you, know, do you know he's been to Germany? Yeah. <laughs> WRC. <laughs> but it was just a great laugh. You, you took away all the pressure of the rally and just had a bit of a laugh. Uh, but I was in this Lancia Stratus and I did a Terry Martin, put a lot of gaffer tape on the top of my helmet because it would, I couldn't sit straight, couldn't have a hands on, my head was like bloody this in the car um, and the fans were like everywhere, like six deep, going absolutely mental and there's all the Group B cars, the Deltas and the Cosworths and the Indian, yeah, yeah, um, as I say it, on, on the outside, it looks pretty crap. What's the point? You're going over there, there's no trophies, there's no timing. Why bother? What, what's the point of that? It's just fun. Just go along. Bit of sun, lovely scenery. Um, That's what it's all about, you're having fun. Yeah, yeah. As I say, I, would, I, I wouldn't have thought I'd have enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, did they close the road? Oh, aye. Yeah. It's full. It, you drive as quickly or as slowly as you want. I mean, some people crash. And you think this is a this is a demo event, not timed. Yet they still manage to st stuff it into the weeds. Um, whether it's lack of talent or just, but I mean, you get this you get this situation where you've got like a little bit of a, a wide, a bit of tarmac, and they're doing donuts, and the fans are going mental. Um, and they are, I mean, the fans, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, you know, like Portugal with the, the 205 T16, it's sort of like that. And this is non-comp. And you're like, well, I dread to think what they're like when the bloody WRC Spain's in town. Um, but it's like the interesting cars, you know, there were, there were so many varieties, Opel Cadets and uh, Mark II Escorts. Sounds a bit special what you were in. Well, it was a, well, it's a Stratus replica, uh, a Hawk. 
but um, there was three of us. There was three Stratuses there. There was also um, what's the little one? Is it a one two four Fiat? Oh no, no, Lancia, no, Lancia. Four, four three seven. Yeah, no, oh, there was loads of all three sevens there. The, uh, yeah, the, the the the. But this is way back before then, like sixties. The little spider. I can't remember whatever. But, but there was. I mean, the cars there were. Uh, Lancia. Lancia. Yeah. 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 Um, there's some of the, I mean, some of the kits, I mean, there was a lot of guys from Ireland turn up with a lot of Mantas and the Sconers and stuff with a bloody transporter, you know, like six cars on this transporter. And yeah, I mean, because of course it's all non-com, they don't mind getting shedded as well. Finish the Friday night, like, oh, let's get, get to the blathered, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, I was there, we were due out of service at a set time. And uh, <laughs> I'd finally got hold of a cup of tea. There was a, a couple from Kendall with a uh, Stratus. And they had a kettle and sugar and tea and everything and proper English milk. So English. I was like, I'm having a brew. And John Rutter was saying like, oh, would you out? Oh, I don't bloody care, I'm having a brew. <laughs> <laughs> so we were, we, were, we were late out of service because I was having a cup. And I said, I'll just put your clog down on the road section. We'll get back, we'll slot back in later on. Uh, but not great fun, great fun. Um, so yeah, and as I said, that's it. And then I was, I was meant to be doing more, but that's all gone. Who are you doing more with? Stevie. Yeah. Stevie McCrash, are you there? <laughs> Ginger tosser. Um, <laughs> so you, who's your heroes in the in rallying then? Obviously besides me. <laughs> so hang on a minute. Terry, you've asked all the questions tonight. Anybody else got a question? Right, Terry. Oh, over to Terry. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> I've got a question. Who's your hero in rally? <laughs> <laughs> well, after yourself, Steve, of course. <laughs> um, I don't know, really. Um, and Pat. I, I think, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, Pat was special. Pat, um, yeah, he could be annoying sometimes. I mean, he had a head full of magic. I mean, it were, but he was such an infectious sort of bloke. You couldn't help feel enthused when you were around him. Um, he loved his motorsport and he made sure, I think, that most of them around him also enjoyed it. Um, it, was, it was a laugh. A lot of people, I think, I think some people go, out, go, go about rallying a little bit the wrong way it's all about the result or oh, I came sixth at Three Sisters and the only reason I didn't come first was because of this or because of that and because of that like, but did you enjoy it well, well yeah but, but yeah but I wish I'd had changed I should have changed my time no no did you enjoy it you know shut up about all this and none of us well most of us aren't gonna make it we ain't gonna get a paid drive um, one thing I noticed when, we, when I was the first event I did in Belgium, there were some really weird contraptions out there. There was a guy in one of those old uh, 190 Mercs, uh, 2.3 Cosworth thing. I mean, it looked and sounded awesome, but God, was it slow. But he didn't mind. He was having fun and he was driving something unique and different, and he probably got his photograph taken far more than the guy that came fifth did. Um, you know, it is, it's, it's, I think, I think sometimes people sort of, I don't know, they miss the point a little bit. You ain't gonna get a telephone call, you know. If, if you win the whole trophy, or you win the Clitheronian, road or stage, you ain't gonna get a telephone call from Malcolm Wilson on Monday morning. Sorry to disappoint, but it ain't gonna happen. Um, so just enjoy it. Don't get too bogged down with if, buts, whys. I did an event years ago, I won't say his name, but I did an event with a guy. And Go on, name no. and shame. No, no. Go uh, on, name and shame. But it was like talking to some guy that was like the next Mark Higgins. And um, you're like, no, y y you know, forget it, mate. This guy couldn't bloody drive a greasy stick up a dog's bum. <laughs> and it was never going to happen. But for some unknown reason, he had this in his mind that he was really, really quick. And as I say, I mean, I was like the guy that I did more with. It was unbelievable. There was all the chat beforehand. Lackey was a real superstar. And I'm starting to buy into this. 
you know, thinking like, well, yeah, you know, it might be all right here, you know. Start looking at the class awards, right? We're in the two, two litre, you know, well, yeah, we're not going to beat him, we're not going to beat him, but he'll probably chuck it off. Yeah, you never know, we might get a pot here. Well, the only pot we'd have got would have been like for bloody last finisher. Um, hey, there's people who want that and been proud of it. Well, yeah, <laughs> be proud of it. You're there, you're doing it. That's, that's like more than a lot of people. There's so many people there that talk. Oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. I look around this room and the vast majority do. They don't talk. Or they did. But they've been there, they've done it. It's and only that's, Pete you're talking about that. <laughs> no, no. It's, 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 it's like, fair play, you're doing it. You know, you, you are, to coin a phrase, living the dream. You, you, you know, you're competing at a sport you love. Enjoy it. Um, don't get too bogged down with the fact that some guy's got bloody throttle bodies and that's why he beat you. Um, he's not probably, I mean, this guy, he was nicknamed on my phone. I think I've still got it on my old Mimo phone. The Vodafone phone. <laughs> it's an old slidey Samsung. It's really antique. And um, him and his mate, it was Dweeb and Dweeb 2. That's what put him on the phone. I was thinking he could have bought himself a 309 GTI for three grand and, or an Astra and had just as much fun rather than spending 25 grand on a Mark II Escort that he thought was going to get him a, a, a trophy when it wasn't. Um, you know, it was just a waste of time. Um, I think, he, I think he stopped after that. I don't think he's done another event since. <laughs> Thank you very much, Neil. We could go on all night, but it's, uh, it's approaching 11 o'clock now. You're all more than welcome to stop and carry on drinking and having a yarn. But uh, I'd like to thank the groupies from Bolton who've come over to support Neil. <laughs> Barrack, more like. <laughs> <laughs> There's been no barracking at all. No. They're definitely your groupies. <laughs> um, needless to say, you're all welcome to, uh, to come back again. And uh, I'd like to thank Neil in the usual manner. Thank you very much for having me. Terry invited me and he said, oh, I said, I don't know what to talk about. I think I've just disproved that, haven't I? But um, he said, I'll oh, talk about football or women. <laughs> thank you very much for inviting me.